Welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist, publisher, and professional editor, bringing you interviews and advice on succeeding in your residency journey. You can sign up for the email list at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com to get your free LOI template or get editing help working one-on-one with me at residency.teachable.com. Let's get started with the show. Welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm Tony Gary, your host. Today, I have Dr. Melissa Turner, who's a certified pharmacogenomics pharmacist and who is very popular on LinkedIn, but also uh, posts quite a bit. Um, so I first met Jamie Wilkie and we heard her on the show. And then I found another PGX pharmacist. Uh, I don't know who came first. We'll figure this out as we go through the show. Uh, but first, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. All right. So tell us a little bit about your journey. My understanding is that you went to a three-letter store and uh, to say, to make an understatement, um, you were no longer happy uh, yes. and, and moved on. Uh, but instead of 95%, or at least uh, from one survey, I've seen 95% of those who are working in pharmacy, uh, when they change jobs, go back to working in pharmacy somewhere else. You mm-hmm. are part of the 5%. That, uh-huh. that actually moved into kind of your own space, not working for someone else. So right. tell me a little bit about your journey and, and how you made that happen. Okay. So I graduated from Campbell University in North Carolina in 2013 with my doctor of pharmacy and began working at CVS as a staff pharmacist after graduation and was there until May of 2021. And back to your question of who came first, me or Jamie, it was definitely Jamie. Um, So I met her through a coach that I had. I joined the Happy PharmD program in January of 21. And through my coach, she introduced me to Jamie. And I was really inspired by what Jamie was doing, what she was creating. I had been stuck at CVS for many years and wanted to get out, but didn't know how to leave, even considered leaving pharmacy altogether. But I'd spent a lot of money getting my degree, a lot of time working as a pharmacist. So I didn't want to throw all of that away. And so before meeting Jamie, I didn't know that pharmacists could be entrepreneurs, that we could start our own businesses. All I had seen growing up were pharmacists in retail settings or independent pharmacies. So I just didn't know what was out there. So meeting Jamie was very much what I needed at the time. And it was um, something I was really glad that God put in my life. And her academy to teach pharmacists how to do what she was doing, which was to create their own business in the area of pharmacogenomics, really was something I was looking for. And so I joined her academy, learned how to start my own business, and officially launched my company, Tar Heel PGX Consulting, on September 20th of 2021. So just a little over a year ago. All right, awesome. And tell us a little bit about how the business is going. What is it you do from day to day? Um, Mm -hmm. So many of the residents are going to find that um, it's it's kind of a a strange thing, but you go through residency and then you can actually burn out from too much patient care under the Mm -hmm. watchful eye of of whoever. Um, So Mm -hmm. it's just another way of getting burnt out. And maybe that's one of the the topics we can really talk about quite a bit. Uh, But tell me a little bit about what you do day to day. uh, And then are you part of a coaching group? Do you coach people or do you have something that can help them? get to where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So day to day, I get asked this a lot and I never really know quite how to answer it because every (laughs) day is different. And that's one of the things I love about what I am doing. And just as far as the business goes right now, I am everything. I am the pharmacist doing the actual clinical work. I am the person creating the social media content for my Facebook and Instagram page. I have created videos over the last year plus for my YouTube channel where I have talked about the results from my PGX test and what those results mean for me. I've interviewed patients about their experience and what it was like for them and why did they do it and posting things on my website, keeping that up to date, writing blog posts, just all sorts of things for my 
patients, doing the initial consultations, reviewing their forms, getting the tests sent out. I also meet people in person one day a week so I can do their consultations and collect their DNA sample at the same time, doing the review consultations, reaching out to their providers on their behalf if their results need to be changed based on, or if their medications need to be changed based on their results, um, following up with them. There's there's a lot. Uh, keeping up on the literature and the research and the guidelines. If you want to enter this space, just be aware that there is no finish line in the learning. So there's always something coming out that you need to read. So you have to stay up to date on the, the latest information. Um, and then your other question about how am I helping people? Um, so I'm still a member of the Academy, even though it's been over a year years since I joined, I chose to stay in the group just because there's so many more opportunities that continue to be available. And I like having that network of people who are still going through this like I am, and we're there to share the good, the bad, and the ugly, because I okay. certainly don't want people to think that owning your own business is e easy and I make a lot of money. I don't right now, but I enjoy my life better and I'm happy again. So um, I, I am still a part of that. I do have pharmacists reaching out to me quite often. It's picked up more so in the last month or two, especially with the content I've been posting on LinkedIn. A lot of people wanting to talk to me, learn how I do what I do. How did I get here? So I do share in that regard. I don't know if later down the road, there will be something more out of that, something that I you know do on the side as far as helping people and coaching them along. Um, but right now, I, I'm ha happy and willing to talk to pharmacists and share and give some of my time. Okay. So I guess we, we kind of touched on something, which is the burnout that comes from uh, the job that you have. And mm -hmm. uh, I have a family of three 11 year old daughters, and there are some jobs that are fundamentally incompatible with being a present parent or present spouse right. or a present partner. And I worked for both of the three letters. Uh, you worked for one, uh, Jamie worked for the other. I, yeah. I worked for both. Uh, but I can't imagine telling them that I can't be there every other weekend for their sports and, and those mm -hmm. types of things. Now, you mentioned before the show, Sundays were important to you, and I, I just remember uh, Clayton Christensen, who is uh, kind of a famous business guy, and he talked about how he, would, he wouldn't play basketball on Sundays, and then for mm -hmm. very, you know, McKinsey, which is a very big consulting firm, he's like, yeah, no, I, I can't do, I can't do Sunday uh, because of my religious beliefs, and I can't do Saturday mm -hmm. because of my family obligations. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about how making this switch has changed your life, mm. because it seems like anytime you post, I got out and now I have this life and you made a huge list of things that you now get to do. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could share with the, the group how your life has changed. <sighs> oh, gosh. Wow. So many different ways. Um, yeah, I worked every other weekend, every other holiday when the so when I first started at CBS, our store was in a little strip mall. So it was only walk in. And okay. then a couple months later, they built a freestanding store a couple oh. miles down the road. So we went from just people walking in to people being able to walk in plus two drive through lanes. <laughs> and the store hour or the pharmacy hours were 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So those were 14 hour days. It was awful. Oh, it was terrible standing for 14 hours straight and then doing it again the next day. Um, but even through all of that, our hours did decrease over time and we started splitting shifts. So that did help some, but I was always missing out. It seemed like on something. So I was missing out on Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or birthday celebrations or vacations with my family or my husband's family. And I'm a Christian and I love God and I love going to church. And when I was at CVS working every other weekend, that really hindered my ability to be able to go to church on a regular basis. There were things that I missed out on at church. I love our church family I, and my friends. So now that I'm in charge of my own schedule, I don't have to miss out on those things anymore. And something I've 
shared a little bit about, but not too much in, in the last few years is that I lost my sister back in 2018. And um, it was a very tough experience. And then about two years later, almost to the day after losing her, my dad died. And so I just got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore because God doesn't promise us tomorrow. So I can't keep giving of myself to a place where I'm not even respected or valued anymore. And I'm not getting anything out of this. It's just tearing me down. And so I can't keep doing this anymore. So now, no, I'm not making the amount of money I was making at CVS, but I have something that's worth more than that. It's more valuable. And that's time with my family, time with my friends and the ability to go to church and worship God. And it's it's a wonderful experience. Um, it's not easy being an entrepreneur, but my life is better because of it. So I think every pharmacist that is looking out the drive through window at this mm. line of cars right now. Uh, I remember going to, I was just down the road and it was uh, nine cars in lane one yep. and seven cars in lane two. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I remember yeah. those days. And uh, tell me a little bit about the actual, like how did you build up to that day where you actually were free, where you could actually say, all right, I, I don't need to do this anymore because I feel like whatever it was with your finances, your bills, your, your mm -hmm. obligations, you, you had to be there. Um, what was it that finally was, how, how did you prepare? Did you take some months to do it, weeks to do it, just mm -hmm. done? Like what, what was that? Um, so for me, so there was a podcast that I listened to um, at the beginning of 2021 about pharmacists burnout. And that was really the tipping point for me, that's where listening to it, crying, realizing, you know what, there are other pharmacists out there who feel just like I do. It's not just me. I'm not a bad pharmacist. I'm not a bad person. There are other pharmacists who feel this way. And I realized that my work environment was never going to get better. So it was me that had to be the one to change. So I began exploring options about what I could do in pharmacy. I had to realize that I could sit back and keep complaining about how bad pharmacy is, or I could try to make a change. And so that's what I did. And talking with other people, both other pharmacists and people who are people that I trust who are not pharmacists, you know, getting their advice, getting their opinions, you know, what should I do? And then, you know, praying about it and reading God's word and seeing God, what is it that you want to do with my life? How can I help people? And so I did put in for a leave of absence and told my boss, I gave him a month's notice. And, oh, wow. and okay. so I wanted to take that time to, really think about what is it that I want for the rest of my life. And <laughs> I know this won't come as a, a shock, but, you know, even the couple of days a week before I was going to leave, he was like, please stay, please stay. Um, because my last day was May 14th. So he was like, can you just stay until the new pharmacists graduate and get hired on? It's, it's only a few more weeks. And Part of me was torn because I didn't want to leave them in a bad way. I mean, this is the store I've been in for eight years and I know these people and I don't want there to be problems, but I have to do what is best for me and my physical and mental health. So I took a six month leave of absence and I was pretty sure that I was not going back, but that's why I took the leave of absence just to have that time to to study and learn how to start this business and really make sure that this is what was best for me and that it was going to work. Okay. Yeah. I, I worked for them too. And, and uh, what happened was I, my IT bands, because we were on our feet so long, 12 to 14 hours, uh, mm -hmm. my IT bands were pulling at my knees and I thought mm -hmm. it was, you know, my knees that were bad or something like that. And the doctor's like, no, you're just IT bands are rocks. And they worked with me to find a slower store. Let me sit down uh, mm -hmm. those types of things were you able to switch stores or that was just not even a possibility of where you left, where, where you were? Because it sounds like it was 
the final straw was moving into that double drive through mm -hmm. where you literally don't have enough people to man every station? Um, well, when I first, so when I first started, I was at the store and because I don't know which came first, um, building the store or the next part. So they bought out, CVS bought out an independent pharmacy okay. in at a local town. So not only when we went to that new store, did we have the patients we already had, but we also oh. had all of that store's patients. Okay. So those, and that was in November when we moved. So right before Thanksgiving and Christmas and <laughs> the new year and um, people getting new insurances, it yeah. was chaos. Yeah. And so I was like all three of the pharmacists me the pharmacy manager the pharmacist from the independent store plus their technicians we were all in this store that we don't know where anything is um, so it took a couple months and then I did float at another store for a couple months um, but for the most part I was at that main store that I started out with but there were many things that happened both with patients and with the people some of the technicians that I worked with that were just things like, this isn't how it's supposed to be. This is not why I got into pharmacy, but I can sympathize with the knee pains. I definitely have a bad left knee, okay. <laughs> but that may be the yeah. years of dance and cheerleading I did when I was a kid, but, you know, standing on your feet for eight, 10, 12, 14 hours on concrete is not helping. Yeah. <laughs> so there it are was, hazards. <laughs> Beware. It was, it, it was unpleasant. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about how, um, so tell me a little bit about your, your patient base. So um, do patients come to you from LinkedIn? Do patients come to you from social? Are mm -hmm. people referring your patients because of social? Um, where does your patient stream come from? Most of the patients that I've worked with over the last year plus have been word of mouth okay. or Facebook. Um, so really? I do have people sharing and their story and referring people to me. And yeah, word of mouth is my biggest uh, business. I do a lot of networking, going to networking groups, both in my town and in surrounding cities, sharing about what I do, going to provider offices and sharing about the services that I provide. But word of mouth has been my biggest way to get patients. Okay. And then, so let's say, you know, I can't handle my dad. He keeps asking me all these questions about his medicines. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them are working. Some of them aren't. He's got diabetes, RA. Um, is that a referral that you could get where somebody just says, I have this family member, just too many medications. I can't mm -hmm. handle it. Um, they've got all these doctors. Uh, do you just have a website where they can just go and, and say, okay, I'd like to sign up to, to work with mm -hmm. Dr. Melissa Turner? Yeah, so I do have a website, TarHillPGXConsulting.com, okay. and it does have information about both of the services that I offer. So pharmacogenomics, helping them with their medications to make sure they're on the right medication, the right dose mm -hmm. for their genetics. And if they're not, how do we get that changed? And reaching out to the provider to make those changes. And then the other service that I offer is nutrigenomics, which is same concept, but, okay. but looking at your DNA to see how it affects your nutrition and wellness and different aspects of your health. But yes, people can sign up for both of those services on my website, or if they're not really sure if it can help them, they can book a free discovery call to talk to me or send me an email. And then are you only allowed to work in North Carolina or is this a national thing? So I have helped patients in other states and mm -hmm. I have not had any issues. I do okay. let patients know that if their tests, their PGX test is going on their insurance, there is a likelihood that the insurance will not pay for it because okay. I'm in a different state. But even if they were in North Carolina, they still might not pay for it, okay. but I have not had any issues so far and I'm not dispensing drugs or stand, sending drugs gotcha. across state lines. It's gotcha. sharing my knowledge and helping them understand their test results and their medications. Okay. So I did talk a little bit with Jamie about pharmacogenomics and what that is, but I, I, I first time I've ever heard the word nutrigenomics. Uh -huh. So can you uh, educate me on that and maybe take me a little down the path of, of what that means for somebody? Because I did re-listen to that podcast episode 
um, because I saw you post it in the link. So I just was like, okay, let me go back to that link and, and see mm -hmm. it. And they had the two uh, people kind of talking about how they were kind of getting their mental and physical health back. But it sounds like Nutrigen, I'm guessing what it is, and maybe, and you can correct me, but I'm guessing that nutrigenomics would be maybe explaining why somebody eats this diet and another mm -hmm. person eats mm -hmm. the exact same diet, but this person looks great and right. this person uh, is not reaping the benefits quite as much, let's say. Right. Can yes. You tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. So when you're looking at test results for a nutrigenomics report, they're going to vary between whichever lab you choose, but the lab that I use um, for the most part is Pure Genomics, and they use 23andMe or Ancestry DNA test results to okay. run the report. And there's nine different areas where they they give you information. So you have the vitamins, minerals, and omega threes, detoxification, GI health, immune health, cardiovascular health, energy and fitness, glucose metabolism. Uh, weight management and cognitive health and memory. So how does your DNA affect you? How does it make you who you are? And looking at that blueprint to see what diet lifestyle recommendations need to be made, or maybe even some supplements, because if there's some, you know, foods that you should be eating, because you're not able to absorb vitamin B6, for example, or, okay. or zinc or folate, but you can't eat those foods, you don't like those foods, you're allergic, then maybe we need to put in a supplement. So yes, helping people with their mood, their fatigue, sleep, uh, their weight management, just all different areas to give you a more personalized approach that will actually help you. Okay. So you, you went through a bunch of things really quick. I want to go through mm -hmm. those one at a time. Okay. So you're, so we, I guess we focus so much on the pharmacogenomics and the drugs because we're pharmacists, mm -hmm. medication experts right. and so on. But now what you're telling me is, and I've heard something like this before, let me take it to a completely different realm and then we'll bring it back. Okay. So I've actually heard some, pe some kids getting off of Ritalin because they got glasses. And it was that their, their behavior was because they just couldn't see the page and they didn't have anything going on. So they just wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, so then they got glasses and then they don't need the Ritalin anymore. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about how someone might be on medications for sleep and then through nutrigenomics mm -hmm. uh, would be able to, would they be able to maybe get rid of those medications? Uh, because I do know someone who's on melatonin, he's on mm -hmm. second shift. Mm -hmm. It's just not working. Mm -hmm. uh, how would it, how could nutrigenomics help someone who's first not able to sleep, I guess, is the first one? Um, yeah, so it would, there's a lot of different factors that go into what our recommendations are. So okay. there's always a questionnaire that the patient fills out about okay. their habits as far as eating, exercise. Mm -hmm rising mm -hmm. caffeine consumption. So trying to look at it holistically, looking at gotcha. the whole person rather than just mm -hmm. one piece of the person. And so seeing areas where we can make changes, where we can make improvements so that maybe you don't need these medications. Um, okay. I certainly don't advocate, hey, stop taking all your medications. Yeah, I got but you. like, I got you. what are some things that we can do to supplement and to help you so that maybe you don't need those because yes, as pharmacists, we know that there are always drug interactions. There's always adverse effects that we can't necessarily stop from happening, but are there some other things that we can do to help you that are maybe not medications? And then in terms of data, do you track like, okay, I've helped this person with sleep. They now sleep 30 more minutes a night or an hour more a night, or they no longer mm -hmm. get up in the middle of the night. Um, and then with weight, is it the same thing? Like is there like an average weight loss or something like that? So how, how do you, how do you measure success, I guess, uh, from mm -hmm. nutrigenomics? So the nutrigenomics service is only something I just started a couple okay. of months ago. So I've only worked with about a dozen patients. Okay. And so I, will you know, look at their report. What are their top areas where they need help? Here are some changes that I recommend. Here are okay. some foods that should be added, avoided, whatever. Or here's some supplements that I recommend based on your results. And then it's up them, up to them to actually implement those changes. But then I do follow up to see how the how they are doing in in those changes. And so offer, only. I guess I was just going to ask: Do you offer coaching? Like, if they wanted you to check in on a regular basis, could you do that? Or is mm -hmm. that not? Yeah. Okay. 
yeah, that, that could be another way. Mm -hmm. Okay. You were going to say something and I interrupted. I oh, no, that's okay. I was going to say only time will tell uh, okay. how, how, how this works. But yeah, I just got started, but it's something I've had people do as that's the only service they do. But then I've also had people who do both the PGX and the NGX nutrigenomic testing because they just want as much information as possible um, gotcha. to try to help them. And then what are the disease states most of the people have? So um, when you're talking about weight management, maybe diabetes is one of the ones that, that we think of, but is there a, kind of a, a disease state? Um, because I know depression is one that I've heard pharmacogenomics used quite a bit, diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, or is it just the gamut? I've seen everything pretty much. Okay. So, All right. uh, yeah, definitely high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, uh, GERD, pain, all of it. I've seen it, uh, okay. but, okay. and the mental health as well, depression, anxiety, ADHD. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So it's, it really is everything. All right. Yes. The whole Netflix. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, Melissa, I've asked you a lot of questions. Um, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you definitely want uh, the listeners to know, uh, especially as it relates to somebody who's going to be going into residency, going to try to treat these patients, finding that there is not success uh, with this traditional way of doing things, mm -hmm. um, how do they kind of say, all right, well, you know, we've done everything except look at what the patient actually responds to. And we are throwing darts at a board here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is there anything I missed? Um, no, I would just want to remind everybody, and this came out of a talk I had a couple hours ago with another pharmacist, is that whatever path you choose, if you start out on something and it's not working don't don't give up on pharmacy um there's so many different opportunities that are out there and then to take breaks take rest it's okay um you know we talked about me taking breaks on sundays uh, not just to go to church but i don't open my computer i don't look at my emails i don't look at social media if i did that if I didn't take those weekly breaks then I might get up get burnt out on this too just like I did at CVS so being able to be in control of my schedule I'm able to do that but if if you're not just in, try to incorporate those times of rest so that you don't end up burnt out on what you've put a lot of time into okay and then uh, just for the listeners, what's the best way to reach you? So your website again, and then the best mm -hmm. way to reach you. Yeah. So my business website is tarhillpjxconsulting.com. And then you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay. And it's T-A-R-H-E-L, not H-E-L, yeah, double H-E-L. Right? Yeah. Tar Hill, uh, not Tar Hill. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a lab uh, misspell my company name on the report. It said okay. Tar Hill. And not Tar Heel. I am okay, from North I'm Carolina. Just... I am a UNC fan. So <laughs> yeah, I got my Maryland shirt on. So we can still okay. be friends. Uh, That's but, fine. Uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll allow it. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, it was great talking to you. And thanks for being on the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. You might also like to check out our available residency audiobooks at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com forward slash books where you can get your first book free if you've never been on Audible before, or work one-on-one -on -one with me as a professional editor at residency.teachable.com. Feel free to send an invite to connect with me, Tony D, on LinkedIn, or email me at tonythepharmacist at gmail.com with questions. Music was by Policy.